Hello, Lee. Hey, you all right, mate? <laughs> Welcome to uh, Golf Kitchen. It says that there, behind me. It wasn't called Golf Kitchen last time we spoke. It was, but it didn't have a sign. So oh, well. someone made me a sign, which was nice. That's really cleared things up. Thank you very much. Um, we are missing somebody. At the moment, we're looking at a door. Yes, this is... Um, I don't know what that little door is. It creeps me out. It's tiny, isn't it? It's He's really so tiny. tiny. We need to investigate what he keeps in there. That, where the leprechauns live. We need to get him to open it and show us. We will, when he comes back. Maybe that's where all the water is. Oh! Maybe. Well, no, because he's... Well, there we are. But again, do it now. Yes. Come on. Are we live? Show Here we are, Mr. Mr. Mark Brown. Oh, internet. <laughs> Mark, um... Can't drink right? water, Brian, so I'm Oh, come <laughs> on. This is an outrage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right, Lee. It, it, it does taste better in bigger receptacles. <sighs> got to stay hydrated. You're like a borrower. <clears throat> is that why you got so that's uh, you were just drinking out of a normal sized cup weren't you yeah and behind you is a normal sized door so I don't understand are you saying a massive or tiny I don't know I confused myself <laughs> <laughs> uh, well the question is Mark what is that is that door behind you really small yeah it's like fucking What's in there? It's a wee door. Show us. It's, a, it's an Irish uh, home decorating tradition. <laughs> Started by Carol O. Smiley. Oh. And, in, and she, she, change it roms. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, you, we, we got a wee door. What's behind the wee door? I remember that from... Uh, the, it, from it's a, it's a facade. It's not, it's not right though. <laughs> But you, you just, you gesture to it as you go into the room, you go, let me do it. It's just, okay. It's an Irish tradition. Okay. Um, Lee, you're in Germany. Yeah, I am, yeah. What German traditions are you going to show me tonight? I haven't decided yet. Okay. We'll see what happens, Brian. Throw one in. Oh, of course. They'll definitely okay. be I'm sure. Let's start. Um, Mark Bowen. Mr. Mark Bowen. Dr. Mark Bowen. Dr. Mark Bowen, thank you. Dr. Mark Bowen. Or Bobo. Um, where did Bobo come from? Don't know. Honestly. Oh, really? <laughs> no one calls me it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, do you call me Bobo, Lee? I call you Bo. Yeah. That's nice. I think Joe might call me Bobo. Some... No, not really. I think it was Joe that came up with it years and years and years and years ago. I think he just called you Bobo once and then all of a sudden that was your name. Yeah. No one. It's, you... it's still used a lot. Marco, Marco calls me Bobo. Joe calls me Bones. Deb just grumps at me. <laughs> Deb makes a noise. We try and figure out what it means in the room. <laughs> you had you had Bobo embroidered on your white boxing shorts. I did, yeah. Well, you know, you embrace it, don't you? <laughs> Bobo there. That that was actually a typo. We're supposed to say Boyo. <laughs> 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 okay um, I'm just going to call you Mark you, you, honestly Brian you can call me whatever you want um, okay. I use all all manner of names Mark I don't know many names. how are you I have many names how are you mate where are you and what have you been doing today uh, I'm good I'm uh, I'm sat in front of my wee door uh, in in my otherwise giant room with my giant cups. Uh, I'm good, yeah, no. Um, just getting into the into the, the lockdown mode again, I guess. Just kind of sensing that all out, working out what's going to happen. Um, and what was I doing today? I went for a swim today. So is that already? So that's why I'm tired. So... Look forward to some good chat for me. <laughs> I'm on board already. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else been going on? Don't know. Just a lot of uh, lot of back and forth to Bristol. Lot okay. of, um What have I been doing since since we last spoke? What have I taken up? Have I taken anything up, Lee? Strengthening finger shrimps. Strengthening my fingers all times. 
at all times since this morning. And uh, just learning my trombone shapes. Not trombone, trumpet. Get ready for album four, Ryan. Oh, that's a... It's the brass album. That's a C. Yeah. Off, off. A D. Only need to learn two chords if it's us, Three, Three, maximum. Lee? Yeah? Uh, Mr. Lee, heartthrob. Um, you are you are the Harry Styles of the, of the band, so... Harry Styles, hello. <laughs> What does that make me? Um, the Keith. Yeah, you're not. I don't know. The Keith. Lee's the, the heartthrob. That's all I'm saying. All right, that's fair right. enough. I'm not judging you at all. Well, you Just, are. You, you decided I'm not the heartthrob, which is no, you're not. No, I didn't decide that. The, the ladies did, mate. Well, that's, I mean, maybe, I, maybe I, maybe I don't want the attention. You, get, dance, eh? you, get, you spend most of the time on stage in your underpants, Mark. You get plenty of attention, mate. I mean, you've been ad, mate. Oh, jeez, Mark. He's called you out. He's called me Lee. out. Lee. Lee. that little cupboard in a minute, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, where are you? How are you? And what have you been doing today? Uh, I'm in Hamburg. <clears throat> um, I woke up late this morning because I stayed up late to watch some of the American election, which... A massive uh, waste of my time because nothing really happened and I fell asleep. <laughs> uh, then I woke up in a weird in a weird state of affairs with loads of noises happening. There was building works. There was kids screaming. There was all like loads of shit going on. So then I got a headache and that kind of stayed with me all day. Then I had therapy for an hour, which was really nice because it settled me. Good. Played some guitar, as I do every day. You a noodler? I'm a noodler, a noodling. Just went a and there you are. Noodle, noodle, noodle. Are you in lockdown yet in Hamburg? Are you in lockdown in Hamburg? Well, yes. Um, Hamburg's in lockdown too, but um, the differences between the lockdowns are, are vast. I mean, the shops are open here. And no, wait, are they still open? Yes, they're still open. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just uh, check out? Is there a shop in your eye line? Yes, yeah, I have one in the living room. Yeah, that shop still open. It, my <laughs> living room shop's yeah. open. Still, we're still serving. Nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot calmer here, and it always has been ever since um, the beginning of the pandemic. Germany has been a lot calmer. Has it? That's <laughs> weird, eh? Really. So yeah, I mean, but I'm going. I'm back in the UK as of Monday. Are you allowed to? Because we're in lockdown now. You can travel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no travel ban on this lockdown. This is a shit lockdown for everyone, isn't it? Really? It's the worst lockdown I've ever heard. Of. <laughs> it, it, it's a very dubious lockdown, isn't it? It's like, is is. <laughs> we don't know what to do. Let's just do something. That's what yeah, it is. But in all seriousness, I'm not pissing around. I'm just going back to the UK for six weeks. So okay. You know, just wants to sample what a UK lockdown's like. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> he had the German flavour last time. He wants What's to try the UK one. Spice of life, Brian. It is, yeah. It's like continental, mate. I'm, I'm quite jealous. I'm done with the continental lockdowns. Do you know what I mean? You want your... I wonder where you're going to go next. It's exciting. I want to get, get one of those full English lockdowns. <laughs> done it. It's pretty shit, mate. Don't worry about it. All, all, the, all the shops are shut. It's nowhere near as good as yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to talk about the last eight months. The last time I spoke was like seven, eight months ago to you two, which was when we when you released the Batacan album. Do you remember? And we had a chinwag that week. Mark looks a bit shocked. Jesus, uh, I thought we spoke. Mark, it was no March of this year. Yeah. yeah. So um, right, it was like almost like a week before lockdown, or the week it was the, the the pandemic was just something that we were starting to talk about. I think yeah. so um, for a couple of weeks. So we, the album came out, and we spoke to you all then. But we, one thing we weren't allowed to talk about, obviously, was album three because we were all banned, and it was really difficult. But we managed to do it. Um, and then the summer arrived, and album three finally hit the shelves. So they say. One thing, one thing you two got up to during the summer 
was when the other two did their drum and drummer. Did you ever watch any of those? I didn't, didn't watch it. <laughs> the support okay. is brilliant. Do you okay. like the theme tune? I did the theme tune. Did you? Yeah. Dev got really annoyed at me. He was like, I, I, just, I called him out. I was like, Dev, just, just say dumb and drummer, go. And I recorded it. I was like, thanks, bye. <laughs> that was it. Um, Mr. Talbot did his TV show. What was it called again? Bolly TV or something like that? Bolly. Bally. Bally TV. Bally. I've only ever seen it written down, so I wouldn't know. You, you were on it, Mark. Was I? <laughs> oh, my word. You was on the one with Billy Bragg, remember? That was a TV. I thought that was just like a Zoom. I thought Joe was like, do you want to come around? Do you want to have a wee Zoom? It, it, I, did, a I did one as well. <laughs> it looked, when you were doing it, it looked like a Zoom chat. When it went on YouTube, it looked like a TV show. Yeah, I... yeah have a look, mate. You're, 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 your face is in a teddy Brian, bear. Brian, Brian, yes, mate. be careful what you're going to say, because Bowen doesn't know I've been making a, a pedal show about us both. Who, did you get a look alike then to play his part? No, Bowen, Bowen thinks we're just having a Zoom chat about how we made the album and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, so got some what else is going on? Is this going okay. on? So you had, this, yeah. This, is this, this, this going to end up on YouTube? <laughs> Probably. Do you actually see um, any rights from this? Yeah, yeah, Fuck yeah. All, mate. Sure. You two made a TV, a, a internet TV show called Genks. So Do you remember? Did. Yeah, 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 no, I was aware of that. Like, Lee, Lee, was, Lee was pulling your leg there. I was, uh, I was very much involved. Yeah, I was, I was very much involved. <laughs> How many did you do? Three, three or four? We've, we've done three. There's more coming. Four is in the making. It's like it's become increasingly difficult to uh, to care, Brian. It's just, it's the business. <laughs> it's a big problem. It's, uh, I've lost all um, the caring thing, you know. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very shruggy at the minute, <laughs> particularly. I mean, my answer to a lot of stuff starts with this and ends with a... Okay, let me uh, remind you. No, 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 we're, we're working on it, but we're just, <laughs> the, the thing is, is like, we, uh, we kind of started post lockdown made ourselves really busy and then we're now like too busy doing all sorts of stuff so it's like yeah it's hard hard to, hard to pin me down anyway, really isn't it Lee, Lee's, Lee's trying Lee's done all his bits wow I'm just let right. um, Lee if anyone didn't watch Ginks can you just tell people what it was describe it to us uh, it's a pedal show where Bernard and I talk about what we did on album three and other albums because we did we did three albums so you know we used tricks as we went along and then we talked to a guest and all the while I edit it so Bowen looks silly <laughs> <laughs> I, although I have to say I do a pretty good job with that myself yeah I mean it's really easy editing to be fair um, yeah thanks I really enjoyed Ganks. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna admit I watched them all and I didn't understand almost all of it. <laughs> you, that makes two of us, Brian. <laughs> and I, I it was, was only being played. That makes three of us. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, let's it's talk about this pedal like for twenty five minutes. I'm like, okay. And then this one, okay. I enjoyed it. I'm not saying it was shit, I enjoyed it, but I didn't know what was going on. Honestly, it was a learning curve for both of us. We learned about things we didn't even know were happening around us. My highlight, can I tell you my highlight, was when you had, who was, what was the guy's name? Alan from Girl Band. Yeah. He sat there at the other side of the screen on his little Zoom shot, and he started playing those sounds and that riff from that album. And you, your faces were like... It was so exciting. It was almost... It was, it was magical. It was totally magical. If you've not watched it, play, watch it. it. Was you were both so in awe of that man and the noises right. he was getting from his guitar. So um, I looked at I looked at the our reactions to each of our guests so far because we we've, we've had four guests and I'm working on the fourth one now, and I've been watching our reaction to this guest. <laughs> <laughs> both of us are like. 
Like we are, we are like, in, we are so ingrained and engrossed in, in what they're saying. And then I look at the others and there's just this, you can clearly see the difference between each episode of who we are talking to and how much of a wonder it's been for us to just be speaking to these people. Yeah, it's bizarre. And it's normal as well. I mean, it's not normal. So there's more coming. Yeah. yeah. When, it, when, when Mark gets his act together. Yeah. Well, I, can't I think the plan for us is to just do them as, as and when. Um, and we would like to continue doing them for, for a while. But again, before, well, during lockdown, we had loads of time of being stuck where we were. So we could just work on them. And then uh, now we've just got a lot more going on. Was it something that was born pro, pro, from lockdown? Was it like, fuck, what are we going to do? Or was it something you'd kind of always wanted to do? Oh, we've been talking about it for a while. Yeah. Um, and we were going to start it on tour. We were going to do like, uh, you know, meet up, either do it with a support band or do it with, um, you know, people that we meet up with and wherever we would stop off on, mm-hmm. on the road and do things like that. But then... Uh, Lockdown presented us with an opportunity to do it just on the off Probably. the cuff, basically. <laughs> and have some fun with it as well, because it looked like yeah. you were having a lot of fun. A lot of you know what, that, lot of very, that, very quick that was kind of, Yeah, that was kind of like accidental. Like I mean I think we, we both knew we wanted to do it like lighthearted, like not like a serious like there's a lot of pedal stuff online that's like <laughs> yeah. you know, just like oh, wow I never want to play guitar again um, after watching it but like so we wanted to do something that was a bit lighthearted and a bit like less um, bluesy bluesy for one um, but also I don't know just like I think you, you know people can take music a bit seriously especially on that side of things like where you're like uh, effects and stuff like that so we just wanted to do something that was a bit not serious about it it and definitely worked we wanted to show people that we were learning about all these pedals as we go as much as anyone else is like i mean like both of us get asked often <laughs> what pedal someone should buy like someone people actively ask us like what what pedal i've got this much money what pedal should i buy i never know how to answer that because it's entirely up to you what pedal you want, what you want to sound like, what noise do you want to make. And that only comes from just playing around with pedals, going to guitar shops, plugging a pedal in and just seeing what sound it makes. And that's been a big deal for us, our entire careers, our entire lives, really. So, and we still do that. If we, if ever we go back on tour, <laughs> we will probably end up back in um, music shops, trying out pedals and, videos <laughs> and buying pedals, that probably we'll never use again because we just got excited about it in the shop. How many pedals do you own now, Lee? I honestly don't know. I really, Roughly. I really don't. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at like 30 now. Um, well, hang on the wall. Yeah, I just, I just, you know. <laughs> in your shop, Lee. There, it's just my shop. <laughs> and we're open late. Um, no, I got my pedal board and a box of pedals here that I play with while I'm in Germany. And then I got the same pedal board in, in England with another box of pedals. And then I've got a load more pedals at my friend's studio, which I let him hold on to. And they're, they're all just, every single one of those pedals has been used live as well at some point. It's just run through a course. You know, oh, Lee, no one, no one is going to care about this, but I just want to show you. Go on. Uh, it- so what is that then? As a noise maker. Do you remember the um, the Allen girl band thing? Yeah. This company. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I immediately went on and bought their weirdest pedal. So that's album four was going to sound like girl band. Come on, brilliant. Yeah, girl band in space. <laughs> When you let me go back to last September when you were recording Ultra Mono, do you remember all them that was almost over a year ago? Yeah, no, it's mad. It's mad to think. Um, in Paris, do you 
before you get to that studio, how much of that in your head is done? How much do you do you take with you, as in you know exactly what you're going to play on those tracks, and how much is improvised there in the studio? In that that instance, I'd probably say about ninety percent was set, wasn't it? There was a bit of fine tuning in the in the rooms because noises change in different rooms. But I think, yeah, I mean, so, some some stuff changes. So like things like we had an idea that we want to do a lot of like straight to desk stuff, which is like where it. Well, it's exactly as as I've described. So you go straight into mixing desk. You don't go to the amp, which yeah. like means that it's not microphonic either so it's not like picked up by microphones and just removes a lot of stages it keeps it very dry and it adds a certain character to it and then you can also use the desk which is like you know the thing that people talk about recording studios like you know they've got this neat desk or this api and stuff like that and basically use the the preamps and stuff like that to give and it just gives it a very unique yet dry guitar sound so things like that and then and then there's just overdubs and stuff like that that probably weren't in our heads beforehand. And that normally comes out, like a lot of overdubs would be like, um, you 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 play it, you know, whenever you're playing guitar, sometimes you hear it completely differently because you've got the the hand that goes jang. And you, you know, you think that that jang's really powerful and then you hear it recorded and you're like, oh, that bit was kind of missing. So you add a jank in on top of it or things like that, just to really like bolster the recording. Um, and then sometimes it's just like the feedback that you were hoping to happen wasn't kind of coming across. Because, I mean, most of the stuff we record, we record live. So, like, Lee and I will do our guitar parts as John's recording the drums. Okay. And um, Dev does the same thing. So, so basically all, all of us just do it all together. And sometimes the vibe was so good that the sound kind of becomes secondary so like you're like that take was sick and then you listen back to it and you're like oh i missed this i didn't have that feedback but the 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 playing the like interplay between john and us and dev kind of was vibier when we spoke last time lee you said to me that the two of you together make one really good guitar player which is the way you described it basically i mean it wasn't me that came up with this it was okay uh, it was, um, who was it? Total Guitar? <laughs> well, when you both come second, they're the best guitarist in the world. You both, exactly. you both come second, which was... But there were uh, other guitarists. Guitarists. It was best, it was best new guitarists. guitarists. Let's yeah, not get ahead of ourselves here. That would be a great offence to all the guitarists out there to even be good at us. Is, you know, this is something that Byron and I have, you know, had to work on and tried to work on, is to actually be coherent guitarists together. Because it's really it's really difficult to understand where you are supposed to fit, like brutalism, everything, joy. We're a bit like this, and ultra mono. It's like, well, I think like if you if you look at like post punk bands generally, they only really have one guitarist. Mm -hmm. So if you look at like Gang of Four, uh, Talking Heads, I mean. He played guitar sometimes, I guess, but like, um, you know, a lot of Joy Division, you know, there, there's only really one guitarist and there's not really. So it, in order to kind of like recreate the sounds that we lean on a lot, like our, uh, and are influenced by, um, we kind of like joined up to make the one guitarist. We are both Andy Gill. Lee's Andy, I'm Gill. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or, or like me and Devil join up. Yeah. He's paid, I'm Hook. See, we'll see where I'm going here. Yeah. Uh, Gil, no. He's, 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 he's now. I've now taken Gil. Bernard Sumner. So he's Bernard Sumner. Dev and I are Peter and Hook. And John's John Beavis. Why would we? He doesn't need to pretend to be anyone else. Do you know what I mean? Well, you're right. Do you ever get you do do you, do you ever get in the studio together? Just you two, and, and hammer it out. Uh, once, uh, not in a studio, but once on tour in America, we sat down together in a room and did him. 
Yeah, that's right. Brian had the idea for him, and we sat there and we 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 figured it out, and that was about the only time the two of us just sat together. Really? Like, yeah, I've got that demo. We're playing, we're playing acoustically, and you can hear Fontaine's DC in the background. You know. <laughs> when you're right, when you're writing together, do you who who works out who's do, who's going to do what bit? Depends. What happens. Depends what happens in in the song in itself i guess so like if bowen came to the room with a song idea then he will he would say oh i think you should do this or you should do this or maybe do something like this if it's the other way around then if i have an idea i'd say the same to bowen but in general it's there's a basis because usually it's bass and drums to begin with that's how we always start then one of us will go on top because we had an idea and then the other one will come on top of that that's that the, the old way, the, 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 the building block of it all. The other thing is like we, like more recently, we've kind of like learned how to play to each other's strengths. So like certain guitar parts, it might start off Lee's playing it and then it'll be like, actually that's either that the guitar part would be way better for me to play or be like the part that we need to go with that is more of a Lee part anyway. So we kind of swap. Swap. Do you think you've got when you hear a bit on the guitar? Do you think that's more Lee than me? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think now I listen to the, your, your stuff a lot. Obviously, I think I can tell without even knowing it. When I listen to oh, tomorrow the first time, I think I can tell who's playing what now. Whereas before, especially stuff like Brutalism, it's just a, a big oh, mash yeah. bar noise. It's like it's like this. But oh, tomorrow is so clean, for want of a better word. Yeah, I think it can really, really, it really stands out to me now what parts Lee's doing and what parts you're doing. We are also panned like you're watching us. Okay. We tend to okay. do that. So it'll, it'll still be I'm on the left and Lee's on the right sometimes. Although I think Ultramano might have changed that just because of the nature of the parts. Well, you did. The panning moved. Because, like you say, the nature of the parts, the part yeah. we go central or like you'll end up right and left. Sometimes I'm dev. Or, yeah, or you're dev. And also, actually, in Ultra Mono, um, I'm doing all of the feedback, whereas before, Bowen would generally do all the feedback. Yeah, I did, I did the background signs that go across yeah. and joy. And you did that on this album. Yeah, which... We Why was that? It just worked out that way. It sounded that's the way it sounded. I, I think it was just interest. You were interested in feedback at the time, and I kind of lost interest in it. You I was more in like it sounds trying to sound like a bass. <laughs> but so, so it's kind of kicked out by the like, band. I was going to turn up one day with a big beard, shaving my head, <laughs> stand in his position in the room, piss him off. <laughs> Cheers. Um, for the guitar sound at the start of Carcinogenic, for as an example, is quite a distinctive sound. Mm -hmm. Carcinogenic and Reigns have both got very distinctive guitar sounds. How, where does that come from? How is that literally just fucking around with pedals and thinking in your head, I know what I want to hear, and then trying to right, find you know what? a way of making this, it? This one's interesting uh, because Carcinogenic, the chords I'm playing. However, I'm not playing the intro. Bowen's playing the intro. The intro came about after the song was written because Bowen thought that there should be, I think it was you, wasn't it? Was you or not or Joe that wanted an intro to the song? I, it, was, it was actually, I was just fucking about at the studio before we played it. <laughs> so there we go. But I play the, the chords using natural tremolo with my fingers. So I'm not using an effect. I'm not using any effects. It's, it's a, essentially a clean guitar. Yeah. Except I'm pulling the strings as I play it. So it's like ring, ring, ring. Then when Bowen does it, he did it. How did you do yours? Lazily. I can't remember. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I got uh, someone else to play the part and I just... Uh, shook them and that's how you get that tremolo <laughs> effect 
Oh, that was, that, I, I wish that was I can't. I can't remember. I, 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 I all. All I remember is that that I was, I was kind of just like doing it in a real like laid back, dreamy, reverby way. And then Nick was like, recording was like, "There's the that's the intro, great, thank you." Okay. The, that was a part of the album that was written in the studio. The guitar, the guitar sounds on the album are quite something. Every track's got at least three or four different obvious guitar sounds on it, or effects on it, or whatever. When you go and play that album live, it's just a very geeky question now that I don't quite understand. When you go <laughs> and play that album live, and you've got your pedal balls in front of you, how the fuck do you get those pedals? To re, 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 reproduce what you did in the studio, I've I've oh, been yeah. <laughs> very very difficultly, Brian. <laughs> um, with with um, I've actually been talking to our guitar tech today, and he sent me this diagram of how we're going to do everything, and it's like, you know, like a really complicated, <laughs> a very complicated thing. It's like it's like some ancient. Um, architectural thing that like no one understands how it works it's it's crazy but yeah so it's it, lots of stuff like that but i mean at the same time a lot of it is just very it's quite straightforward just using a, a very like batshit effect like um and loads of amps so like the the the, the sound in range that womp, 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 that's like that's just using a like a filter on like something uh, like an octave down that makes it sound like a bass, and then just using like a wall of amplifiers to make it sound like it's coming pummeling you in the head. So the way we're going to be able to do that live is by having our big Led Zeppelin meets the Who meets Sons yeah. behind us. But if you would then want to, in the next track, or the next track down on the tech list, if you want to use the same pedal, and where, what, 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 I just don't get the bit where you, what, you this is when you bend down and go, yeah. fucking hell, yeah. fucking hell. You've got, to, you've got to get on your hands and knees and turn as quick Literally. as you can. Oh, is it, have you got, like, little Lee, Lee, do that. I'm getting a really complicated system where basically there's, there'd be a path of light traveling <laughs> near my arm, and depending on what position my arm is in, it Gavin all... runs in and does the dial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a set list to read and an instruction sheet basically yeah the- no yeah it's, it, it, that was uh, that was like the learning curve with the Abbey Road sessions as well was like yeah. we were like hi yeah. it's like grinds for me I've got like I've got to hit five pedals at the same time before <laughs> the uh, <laughs> So my, my favorite thing about stuff like that is when, when you've got that many pedals to hit at once you can't do it at once you have to do this like step on so then you've got to figure out which pedal has to go on first and then which pedals can follow it and not make the sound fucking awful <laughs> so you hit that first pedal and you go oh that kind that yeah that kind of sounds on it and then when you hit the others they go yep yep he's there he is you're your finger uh, thing you brought today. Can you get one of those for your toes? You yeah. can make all five toes really strong and massive, and then you could go bang on all five. Five. Start wearing winkle pickers so I can change settings with my toes halfway through. Definitely. You also have Lee. to know where the pedals are. <clears throat> if you've got a pedal board that's this long, and there's one pedal here and one pedal here. <laughs> <laughs> like the piano in big that's what you'll be Definitely. like next time yeah so you've got to then step step so you've got to try and figure out the best pathway it's great it's you'll have cool. your own stage next to the other stage because it's that, full of pedal boards or we could just buy switching systems where you press one button <laughs> it seems like we're going that way to be honest Lee there was a picture a photograph that was put online last September and it was quite a horrible photograph of you because you were um, playing a recorder. Uh-huh. And the whole idea of a recorder on an Idols album kind of horrified me because it's the worst fucking instrument in the world. In my head, I was thinking, in my head, I thought I was expecting like a kumbaya solo. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking glad it never happened. I think I 
Actually, I, you I, know. I forgot I about the, the recorder, but I think I rem I think I've heard it now on the album. It is on the album. Yeah, did it make the yeah. album? Yeah. I think it's in. I think it's in the breakdown of Reigns. Am I right or wrong? Uh, Fuck. Where is it then? Tell me where it is. Well, first of all, should I, should I give the secrets away? Should we just give all the secrets away? But yeah, so it's out now, mate. It's common. Imagine knowledge. this is an episode of Gangsley. All right, first of all, the recorder was a ruse. Ooh. It was a ruse, was it? It was a ruse. <laughs> so we, when I did the feedback for Reigns, it sounded like a recorder. Did I? So that was just was, actually guitar. I was, I was nearly there then. But then we joked about it, sounding like a recorder. And then I found a recorder. In, in, it actually had one there. So I stood next to a mic and actually did it a bit. And then that went on the anxiety, didn't it? Anxiety, yeah. yeah. I think it's also in... No, it's not in range there. No. It's not in range, but it's at the end of anxiety. But also my guitar feedback at the end of anxiety also sounds like a recorder too because it's in doing essentially the same same trick as i did on reigns where it's just a certain amount of gain staging to make the amp and guitar feedback with each other in a certain way also another thing that i found in uh in abbey road <laughs> very fucking difficult to do <laughs> to recreate because they turned my you... cabs backwards so i couldn't have the cone in front of me and <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to get a recorder for uh, tour. There we go, sorted. On a stand. On a stand, yeah. Jeff Rotol, one leg in the air. I need someone else to do the holes because I still got to play guitar. So mm. maybe Gavin, our tech, can come out and hold the holes while I blow. Done. Hold, hold the holes while I blow. I think we should move on. <laughs> um. So album three arrives a month after it was due. Big yeah. reviews, loads of people loved it. Reviews fabulous. Few people didn't. They were cunts. We won't talk about them. <laughs> I think um, people are entitled to, to to like or not like whatever. I know that, Mark. But there was a few reviews out there that were just <laughs> they were dirty clickbait, nothing else. So, oh, but 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 weren't they just the <laughs> Like Yeah, one a few of them were. Yeah, a few of them were more wonderfully brilliant, but. <clears throat> The internet can't handle that shit. Everyone's in lockdown. Everyone's losing it as it stands. So yeah. all of a sudden, you're going, your baby's ugly, your baby's ugly. And everyone's going, it's not. And it all went tits up, basically. It's, it went, because it's just tough times, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The album comes out and goes to number one. How does that feel to have a number one album? Looking back now, three, four weeks, how does that feel? Um, it's really weird, right? Like, I've got no perspective on it at all. It's like, it was weird. Happened on a Friday. It was just like, yeah, buy a pizza tonight. And like, and there's been no, there's been like no real kind of sense of what it means or like what it is. Like, it, I mean, is it anything? I don't know. Like, so it's just really strange. The, the, the weirdest thing and the thing that like, I'm really struggling with at the minute is that we've not really had feedback on 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 the album really. Like it's kind of like yeah, there there was reviews, but like reviews aren't we aren't real. Like they're edited and crafted, and there's often an agenda behind it, whether good or bad, and stuff like that. So it's it's kind of. Um, kind of weird and like even even like seeing like re re reactions from people you know posting on twitter or facebook or things like that like it's still um you know that's only like a snap a little snapshot whereas like if you're out performing night after night after night you get a real sense of like oh this song is you know this and the songs evolve as well so it just it, it's just it's a really bizarre time but i mean it's 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 it's, it's interesting as well like i think it's like it's it's just another way of doing an album where you don't must I mean the Beatles must have had this right because they released a lot of their albums without playing it live. So like they very they were the first band ever to not most bands in the sixties yeah literally played all those songs on tour and then pick the ones that the crowd reacted to 
They were the ones yeah. that go and record and make the album with the Beatles were the first band to do it the complete opposite way, yeah. Yeah. So release the album then tour it. I mean the difference is they did it by choice. <laughs> we actually, we actually like playing the songs that we record. Yeah. But I well, yeah, look, feel the same as Bowie. Well, Joy, you released most most of Joy was out there on tour yeah. before Joy arrived. Yeah. Almost all of it, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, everything except Never Find a Man with a Perm in June, I think, were the only ones we had in late live. Um, whereas Mono was very different. Yeah, very on the we to keep it. Yeah. It was, that was, I mean, that was a deliberate choice. Like, I mean, a, a lot a lot of parts of Ultramono were written um, on tour and then certain places and stuff like that. And it was like, you know, old idols would have been, we would have been playing that unfinished version that night, you know? You would have, <laughs> would have been getting the... Yeah. You know what? Hang on. The, we, there is one... Uh, we played War at Do- in a Dr. Martin store in Canada. That's right, yeah. Yes. Um, and that was not finished. It was not the, the final version of War. It actually is, it was actually quite different to the, the version we ended with. But we thought at the time that was it. The, the crux of it, the body of the song was there, but we changed a few things. We added a few things, changed, moved the structure slightly and stuff like that. Also, Where's My Ice Cream ended up on the album. Yeah, certainly did. We're going to release a B side version where we actually play the Where's My Ice Cream song. You hear your first case? Yeah. yeah, you should do that. That surprised a lot of people because that everyone heard Where's My Ice Cream almost every night on that tour, yeah. and all of a sudden, like, fuck, we know this. Um, obviously, no tour, you can't go out normally on in old school brutalism days, joy days, there would have been a week long in store tour. You, know, you would have gone over a couple of days and then fucked off for four months and not come back. And there's been absolute fuck all this year. How does, is that the weirdest thing ever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Like, it's so weird. Like, like Bowen was saying, that, like the, the feedback to the album would come in all of these moments, the, the in-stores, the, the tours. Like, and not only that, the feedback of the album comes from small room in in-store tours. Then it comes from an American audience. Then it comes from the English audience. Then it comes from the European audience. And you get all this feedback and this different feeling, completely different uh, experiences of all of these. And at the end of that time, you know which songs you, you love, that people love, that you know really resonate. There is none of this right now. Does it change when you go to different countries, different reactions? Yeah. yeah. You know, it kind of a... makes sense in some ways because obviously, the, you know, like certain songs may be like British centric with the lyrics, mm-hmm. but they resonate really well at home. And then when you play it somewhere else, maybe it doesn't go down the same way because it doesn't relate. But then that was also disproved as a theory when we went to America and they still loved all the songs, but then it made sense because they were in a shit show of a political yeah. as well. So it's transferable. I think a good album is a good album. I think it's, that's the, the glorious thing about music is that it does travel. Um, <laughs> like and it, it. <laughs> thankfully like you're sitting in Germany, so it's definitely moved a little bit. Um, <laughs> and if you, if it, if it works, it works, isn't it? One, one, one thing before we move on, because I want to talk about the album a little bit more. One thing we, 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 I want to before I discuss. Mark, you smashed your guitar at Abbey Road on one of the most expensive and historic floors in London. Okay. Did you break it? You chipped yeah, the floor? Yeah, yeah, It's like, a, it's this beautiful, Fuck. this marquetry, like beautiful marquetry floor. I, uh, yeah, there's a big chip out of it. I feel, like, I, I felt really bad about it afterwards. Like, it was kind of like, I, I mean, I've, I've chastised Lee in the past whenever he did it. Um, but it was... Uh, felt great, I needed it? to do it. Like, it, it just, it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't for show or anything like that. It was like, it was a... It was, so was it completely off the mo- in the moment? It yeah. Happened. Yeah, it was. But... And I, you know, and I regret it. Like, but also at the same time, um, it was, it was. It's nice to have those moments, isn't it? It's nice to have those real yeah. moments, and like, it's cool. Like, we're. I, I'm going to do something with it. 
because I've collected all the bits. Yeah. Like. Have you got it all? Yeah. So you did the bit of floor that broke off. Did you take? Did you keep that? Nice. I, I, I put something over the top of that and <laughs> <laughs> did a few sheepish oh, looks and kind of put the rug. We put the rug over here. I nearly slipped. <laughs> <laughs> There's something missing off the floor. I smashed my guitar slipping on your floors. Those, you know, the floors, the Abbey Road floors, where the Beatles recorded all their stuff. Yeah. You look at all the photographs of the Abbey Road sessions, and they're on that floor. And I'm thinking, he's hitting his fucking guitar on that floor. It's yeah. so like, it's, it's just yeah. mad. It was, it was really weird getting there. Like, I was kind of like, not that I wasn't fussed, but like, it, I just, I didn't kind of, I hadn't fully appreciated what, it, what what we were going in to do. And then I went in and like, you know, went over and spoke to the, we're speaking to the engineers. The desk is like up high. It's like up the stairs at the top. Okay. And then look down and you're like, oh, f oh fuck, it's that room. Yeah. Uh, that like, room, yeah. You, you've seen it like so many times. It's like, it's, it's there in the back of your head. It's, it's, when you think of recording studio, like that's one of the first places your brain thinks of. This is cool. Um, I want to go back and talk, I want to talk about the album, but I want to do it in a slightly different way. I want to play a game of Idols Pick and Mix. I did this with Dev and Lee last week. So, Idols pick and mix. See, I can thank do you very much. The yeah. yeah. and Brian, I, I, I can do them. I'm not busy or anything. Like, you know, I can... do me, do me some, do me some little jingles and theme tunes. I need a golf kitchen theme tune, Mark. If you could do one for me, that'd be lovely. It's happening. Thank you very much, mate. Um, so, uh, Brutalism had 13 tracks, 42 minutes long. Joy had 12 tracks, 42 minutes long. Ultramono has got 12 tracks and it's 42 minutes long. Correct. Um, we're going to go back and talk about those three albums, but we, we're doing it in a way that you and you kind of make one album. So you've got all these songs, but what's going to happen is you're going to make your own Idols album from those three albums. As an example, track one is either going to be Hill, Colossus or War. All right, simple, War. Once you, one, round, mate, no, mate. Fuck off. Once you dismiss the, the other two, they're gone. They never happened. Fine, they never existed. Don't just choose Ultramono, Lee, on all of it, because that makes it quite boring. Dead. Can I just say, John chose pretty much brutalism for most of this. You, you said that I was shit at the quickfire round. <laughs> this isn't the quickfire round, mate. This isn't the quickfire round. I'm sure you get to them questions. I'm here. Right, yeah, so, right. so track, track one, two. this is your album. This is Mark's. This is Mark's Idols album, and this is Lee's Idols album. Track Lee, track one: Hill Hill, Colossus, or War. War. Too quick yeah. to say that, mate. Mark. Wait, don't think about it. Just go. Go with your gut. <laughs> Colossus. Go with your heart. Colossus. Yeah. Yeah. As, as as your only album you're ever gonna make. That's your opener, Colossus. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Track I mean, two. you're too happy with either of our answers, so I'm guessing you're going. Hey, to no. well, Brian loves Heal, doesn't he? <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I, only, I'm only question one with it a bit biased on because Heal still is the best song we ever made. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a bit more flexible now on the second one. Your, your track two on your own Idols album is "Well Done, Perm" or "Grounds." I'm actually oh, that's tricky. That. Well, that is tricky. <laughs> I tell you now, it ain't well done. It's not well done, Lee. In the bin. <laughs> Track two. I, I actually think I'm going to go with Never Fight a Man with a Poem, which is mental because like, I, I love Grounds and I think it's one of the best songs we've ever written, but the poem holds it's this play in really my heart. Song. You know, it carried us for, for a long period of time. I love playing that song still. Mark? Um, grounds. I like Grounds. Grounds is that. Oh, I love Poe as well, but um, I think, I, think, I agree, Lee. I think Grounds is one of the best songs you've ever written. See, the thing is, like, a song two on an album is such an important one. It's always like, it's where you centre the rest of the album around, really. Like, we always write the first one first, so we knew that was uh, each one of those yeah. was going to be number one. But number two is like, it's important. Yeah, grinds. No, it is grind. 
I was reading, very briefly, I was reading an interview with Elvis Costello this week, who just released his new album. This is like 30th album or something. He claims the best song on all of his albums is track four. He oh. says that's where, that track four is the one where people are literally going, am I going to turn this off or not? So he said the best song for him on every album he's ever done is track four. A little bit of, got, little bit of pointless information there. I, but it is, it's something you think about all the time. Yeah. Like, until yeah. we've done an album, like I'm like, what's the track listing going to be? What's the track listing going to be? It was, the interesting thing was with Ultra Mono, we knew that was the track listing as we were recording. Mm-hmm. You, you recorded you, you record them in that order as well? No, we didn't record them in that order, but we knew that was the... We had it written down on the board because we had, we had demoed them and kind of... To, decided on the way. I can't remember. It was the last festival we played. It was the one where we leave. The one where we and you were absolutely loopy in the back seats on the way to Scotland. So no, we were plot. like made, making hats. <laughs> we lost the plot. So we tired. weren't even making hats. We were just putting paper on our head and telling each other, "Look at my hat." I mean, it's not really that funny to anyone else, but we 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 were so tired. That was it. We were gone. Just we were giggling gone. constantly. It was funny. Track three, Lee, Mother, Scum, or Motivator? It's, it's Mother or a Motivator. And I'm going to go with Mother, even though I love Motivator. Mother, again, is, I think, one of the best songs we've ever written. That's the third song you said that, now. Yeah? He's going to say that every time. Uh, <laughs> that's tricky, that one. Mother, scum, or motivator? Mother. Dev chose scum. Dev chose scum because it's one of the best songs you've ever written. No, it's because he's a scumbag. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> we, we all know here, scum is not even a choice. Scum, so I was, it, was, it was between scum, Mr. Motivator, and mother for me, like. <laughs> Go on, next one. It's, um, scum's got a good bass line. See, I, I, I get where Dev is coming from. I don't remember the bass line. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's just it's it's um, my latest flame by Elvis. It's the same bass line as that. Ding 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 ding. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, Stop giving away. Track episodes. four. Track four. Date night. Danny or anxiety. Uh, Why are they all such like almost on par songs? It's great. Isn't it? Do you know what I mean? If any oh, one of those songs is... was up against one of the earlier ones, it would have had an easier time. But oh, like, not I'm like. Maybe you're channeling Elvis Costello now. Track four. Oh, so, well, you're there. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say Date Night. Oh, it's a beauty. Yeah, I, lo- I love playing it. It's one of my favourites to play. I lose my fucking <laughs> shit when I play that song. I remember oh. uh, showing Damien how to play the solo. Yeah, I, I remember that too. It was... <laughs> I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. Bowen goes, so then you, you play here, and then you play here, and then you so do a bend here, and then do whatever you want. <laughs> well, everyone was just looking at him like, what, what do you mean? Yeah, I, I don't actually have a solo. Just, just, you just you want. wobble your hands around. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of brutalism is that. Oh, good times. So yeah, good times. Uh, I'm picking uh, anxiety. Danny, Danny was one of one of your biggest singles, airplay wise. To, it, 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 it's it's like creep for us. Okay, do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. In there with that song, I I loved it. Whenever we were recording, I remember saying to Isaac, like it was my favorite song on Joy, and then it's just I, I still love that song. It's amazing, but it's like I'm in it. I've been there, Brian, with that song. <laughs> it was actually, with that, like, America really got me back into that song with the way the crowds kind of react to it. It changed it for me. I was starting to get a bit wayward with it and a bit kind of lackadaisical with it. Well, you were standing on the shoulders of, of everyone, of the whole crowd during that song, yeah. on that last tour. Yeah, that's a laugh. I've got one of the best pictures from stage of uh, playing a festival in Chicago. We had shitloads of people there, which we didn't really expect. And uh, it was a really big festival. 
we're playing on the main stage and then Bowen's gone out for Danny Nadelka and he stood on everyone's shoulders in this sea of people and then there's this huge skyline of skyscrapers and I've got a picture of it on uh, on film. It's beautiful. Nice. I'm going to cherish it. Anxiety's got the best vocal hook ever though. It's a good track, yeah. Uh, my girlfriend just told me. <laughs> hey, so track five. No, no, that's not the best. Good, that's not the best line. Uh, isn't it the second verse? What affects the number? The number fix. Uh, the government hates the poor. Cold class war, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's He's good, isn't he? Line. He is pretty good. He's good, yeah. Track five, Faith in the City, or Love Song, or Killing With Kindness. Oh, <sighs> that's, a, that's just evil. Do you know what? It would be Love Song. It would be. Okay. However, Killing With Kindness is quite a... Um, quite, it was quite a different song for us, where actually everything's quite equally set out and it's a very nice balance of instruments and, and our playing. So I'm going to go and kill them kindness. Mark? It's like, it's like Sophie's choice, but with, <laughs> with things that don't really matter that much. Um, <sighs> it, like uh, Abby Rowe, Abby Rowe, kill them kindness sounded fabulous live. Kill Kill Kindness is like is one of my was one of my favorite songs to write ever because it was like I was listening to loads of the studios and really wanted to write like our version of Dying on the Street and it sounds nothing like Dying on the Street <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, so it's like that was after seeing the Hives do you remember, do you remember the Hives Lee yeah I really do <sighs> no after the Hives that was like. I mean, the dream of writing a house song was the most and then the I've ever felt in my life. That is literally a hive song. There's, 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 a, there's a few hive songs between the two Parmoir, literally. Yeah, it's literally. You know, if we get a letter from their lawyer, it won't be <laughs> unexpected. So you're going to be killing the kindness, Mark? Uh, no, I'm going with Faith and City. It's, uh, come on, well, are you mad? Track six. Ten four nine. June or Model Village. I'm going with ten four nine. I am also going to go with ten four nine. It's an iconic piece of Idol's work now. That is. That's why. Yeah, but the bridge in Model Village is so fun to play. It's a far, Is it a hard song to play? It's fucking fast. Yeah, but it's brutal. It's all dine strokes. The whole yeah. song. And it's uh, this block party style. Bone and I play it at the exact same time. Okay. When we recorded that for you, you'll enjoy this. We did a first take. We were like, oh, it was all right. Did a second take. And both of us were like, done. It was like that... in Dean after he finishes a solo. <laughs> Banging. It was actually, we were too on point with each other. We were perfectly synced in in the solo, which is not supposed to have supposed to sound kind of chorusy. So stunning, stunning, bit of, stunning bit of playmanship, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Track seven, divide and, con <laughs> divide and Conquer, Samaritans, or, wait for it, Untouche Pas Moi. Stunning. I've been practicing. Congratulations. Uh, you know what? <coughs> this okay. one is probably the hardest. So. Divide and Conquer, live, absolute fucking huge. Yeah. Stonker of a song. Dev's favourite idol song. Samaritans. It's Samaritans. It's massive. Yes, yeah, it's a big tune. Um, it's Samaritans. Mark. See, the problem with the Ultramano stuff, see, with all the, the other stuff, I'm thinking about what it's like to play them live. Yeah, same. This is your album. 
I know, but uh, he's, no he's right here, Brian. He, he's, you've messed this up. You can't, you can't, this, you can't think of those things. Well, you can think about this. If this is your album, you're gonna have to go and play it live. So yeah, think about that. But how's it gonna fit on your album? Oh yeah, I've that. I haven't thought, I haven't about, thought that. about that once. I've just picked. I would have selected <laughs> different. Just songs. My, live album. Set. my album's a mess. <laughs> it is. There is no uh, unity. What did I just have? Killing my kindness. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, no, it wasn't. Really no, what do I? Um, ten four nine. Ten four nine into ten, what? Ten four nine into divide mm-hmm. in the Samaritans or untouche pas moi, Rodney. I was going to say, oh, Divide and Conquer goes well after that, but that's because it's on the same album. Because <laughs> it does, yeah. yeah. Well, that was entirely intentional. Um, the Touche the Par Moi, it's just, it, it's, I, I can't oh. wait to play that live because we're never going to be able to play it. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you, have you tried playing it recently? Uh, I may. Wait. Let's, let's give it a go. It's, the, it's embarrassing. I don't, can't remember it. <laughs> no, you're you're. The, it's all wrong. <laughs> you have to go and listen to the album version. It's pretty good. I've heard Lee, what did you choose for that? Did you choose Isn't like? That, you went Lee went to like, I can't remember how to play that song. That's fine, honestly. It took me about two weeks to, to figure it out. Ah, yes. Number eight, Lee, Rachel Koo, or television, or carcinogenic? Carcinogenic. Television, easy peasy. Carcinogenic for you, Mark? Television. Television? I I would say the, the, the other two, for me personally, are the weakest songs on each of those albums. Ooh, controversial. I think Carcinogenic is probably in my top two on that album. Track nine, Stenel Syndrome, Great or Reigns? Reigns. Reigns, of course, Reigns. <laughs> Reigns is the best song on Ultra Mono, surely. It, it's that big, isn't it? It's, it's that big. The, 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 the saxophone that, that does big. the like, ambulance thing. It's yeah. fucking yeah. Oh, it's lovely. It's the loudest song on the album, for sure. I don't know what the fuck you done when you were... When you were Mixing it, but it's it's volume goes mad. It hurts yeah. on when you got your headphones on. It hurts. Put it that way. And that is actually interestingly a point that you make, Brian. And you would be very accurate in in, in your description of that. Yeah. That was, uh, that was okay. the only. It was the only song we didn't do a certain thing on. Okay. So I'm going to say I'm like that for the I'm that not going to give book. away the. No 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 no. Say that for the book. Techniques. So, I mean, I've got, I've got a few more albums to make, Brian. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> track, track 10, getting near the end now. Exeter, Graham Rock, or The Lover? The Lover. Do you know what? I listened to Brutalism last night Ooh. for the first time since yeah, before it was released. Um, and I, mean, I was listening to it with Joe, and Exeter is so good. I forgot how good that tune is. Thanks. You play it live about a thousand times. Yeah, no, but like really it, it recorded, live. recorded it, it's heavier. It's got, it's got a real. But basically, on my side of the stage, I only ever hear like, you know, I only I've got a bit of dev, but not loads. Yeah. And sometimes the chords don't sound. I mean, that's maybe why in ultra mono I'm doing a lot of bassy stuff because I'm like missing it on my side of the stage. But when you when you the thing about Exeter when we're all playing the chords together it just sounds like a big, bang, bang, bang. Um, but it's not my choice. <laughs> I knew you were going to say this. It's a lovely. Yeah. What were the other choices? The Lover, Gram Rock, or Exeter. Exeter actually is my choice. So I mean, the Lover is so banging, but Exeter is good. 
I'm a big Grand Rock was my favourite track from Joy. Massively oh, neglected as well. Terribly neglected live. I do love it. It's a laugh. But uh, it's, it's not. Good, Jim. It's not on the album. Track 11. Benzocaine, Cry to Me or A Him. I could actually go with Benzocaine. For the album version. I, I, live, I think that song really comes alive. I think the album, the recorded version on, on Brutalism is a bit all right. But I, I still love it. I love the um, the rise up Bowen's intro with yeah. John with the drum roll, and then there's this break where we all come in together. Yeah, wow. I love it. I feel like I feel like Brian's right though. I feel, I feel like we that song hadn't lived enough yet, so the dynamics weren't right. Now we've got the dynamics just right live, where it's like Pow. it's massive. Yeah, it's huge. What's your choice, Mark? Ben's Kane cried to me or a him? A him. So I, track 12 cool. this is not the song that's going to end your album because your, your album's going to end on Slow Savage but the, this is this, the track before Slow Savage White Privilege Rottweiler or Danky Danky <laughs> <laughs> Danky always Danky um, I mean that's easy is it? yeah I think, yeah, I think you'd be foolish to suggest anything other than Rottweiler I know. I, all I'm thinking is Rottweiler, but I'm thinking Danka is. Yeah. No, Although again, similar situation. Live Rottweiler is way better than. Yeah, it is. You're right. I don't like the recording of Rottweiler. It makes me a little bit sad. I agree. Like I always, I always think it's a little bit underwhelming compared to uh, what I know. I about. was. Uh, we thought it was going to be a really good idea that we would mimic like the end of a gig. So we all got really plastered in the studio, obviously Lee accepting, except for Lee. I drank loads of coffee. Lee, you did. <laughs> <laughs> but we drank, I think we drank a bottle of Buck Fast each. We recorded it. And then we like went down the next day and listened to it. We we're like, right, everyone can record it again. Come on. So it's actually a, a hungover. I think it, I think, I, it's not an underwhelming performance. I think it's, we, everyone heard that song live so yeah. long. For so for for years, literally on every brut on every live set on Brutalism tour and before, Rottweiler was there. I'm going so, to change my decision, Brian. On, on the, the last track, of this conversation, Go I'm on. going to choose Danka because um, I think one of the nicest things about Danka is after all the tension that's been built, you get the payoff of the chord sequence at the end, which I really enjoy. Do you and think Danka will become the Rottweiler on the next tour? Savage. Do you think Danka will be the song that, that ends up being the epic last track that goes on for a bit? And, because when you played Lamo and it ended up being Reigns, I know that was unintentional because you had to fill some airtime, but Reigns sounded fucking fabulous um, in that big epic moment. Do you think Danka will end up being the last... We're creating new avenues, Brian. We, you know, to throw you off. <laughs> we, need, we, need a few, uh, we need some new toys here. It's getting a bit, it's getting a bit samey, isn't it? Um, so, Mark, what's your track? Rottweiler, wasn't it? Rottweiler. Yeah, it's got to be Rottweiler. It's so just there's your song as well. It's like so there's your, you can't call your albums the best of idols because that's too partridge. But what are you going to call your album, Lee? Idly. Oh, that's cute, mate. That's lovely. That's lovely. Mark, what are you going to call your album? Brutaloizo. <laughs> I hate it. Thanks for that. That's quite... That's quite Brutaloizo. Yeah. Brutaloizo. Yeah, Rolls off the tongue. Before we move on to quickfire, because we've been talking for about four hours, um... <laughs> what's your, what's your plan? I mean, obviously, the, 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 the tour should happen next year. Fucking hope, hope. If this virus fucks off and everyone, and we will have injections and everyone can go out and play, what are you going to do between now and then? What's your plans for the next six months? Well, <laughs> play with toys. <laughs> right, this this is my opportunity, isn't it? Hang on. Uh, Lee, Lee's going to plug his solo project here. Is right? he? 
Yeah, always he's going to be like, I've written a few acoustic numbers, Brian. <laughs> you know. Always found find, pops. Stop trying to find preaching. something really German for you. <laughs> something really German? Yeah. You're in a German flat, though. It's pretty German. It's really not. It's not that German. It's just lots of plants, mate. Okay. German plants alive, mate. Come on. Mate. He keeps those alive. I can't keep my house plants alive, Lee. How do you keep your house plants alive? Uh, you need one of these. There we go. Stacy. Got to keep them fresh, mate. Maybe. They like this. Have you not got, have you not got one then, Mark? I'm not, no, I'm not going to. Um, not in your little room. It might be full of them. Nope. Oh. Get back in there, you. Dev. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to move on to our, um, to the, our quick fire round. Last time, Lee, you kind of changed the rules of quick fire when you got up and went to your fridge to find me something. Do you remember? Yeah, I don't like quick fire, Brian, so well, I'll take my time. Well, you've got 20 questions each, really. We're going to start with you, Lee. Try it. No, go, Lee. Quick fire. It can be really quick, mate. It doesn't have to take two hours. We're going to start with you, Lee. Lee, what is your favourite idols track of all time? How's that quick fire? Is that Lee? I mean, is he all right? <laughs> well, I think you've got to go with your gut, Lee. Come Top on. Your head. What's, this, what's the one song? Top of your head. Go. I'm, I'm like saying like eight, eight, eight different songs right now. I'll just go Reigns for now. There we go. Mark, favourite idols track. I mean, I'm just shocked that he picked Lil Reigns. Um, <laughs> Reigns. <laughs> no, it's... Um... Lee. Lee, favourite comedian. <laughs> uh, it's Vic Reeves. Mark, James Bond, yes or no? Oh, don't I get the answer to that question? Oh, my Maybe you might come up in the minute. Maybe. She's watching. James Bond, yes or no? Doctor, no. <laughs> Give you a cryptic answer there, eh? Lee, what's the sound of the sword going in? What? King. <laughs> what are you on about? First, first, first line of your new album, what's the sound of the sword going in? What about it? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark, what's the best thing you've ever eaten in America? You've got the wrong people here. Switch the questions <laughs> round. Uh, best thing I've ever eaten in America is... Lee, Lee knows the answer to this. It's a chocolate cronut. That's not correct. It's so it, 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 ever it, eaten. It was, it No, no, York. I've got it. I remember. It was, we went to this uh, Taiwanese restaurant and oh. they had... Scallion pancakes. Spring onion pancakes with this like dipping sauce thing going on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Very delicious. I'm with him. We've actually been making them. Lee. Go on. Lee, are frogs evil? Nah, mate. Okay, they are. <laughs> They're not. Mark, your spirit animal. No, Mark, name, name, just name an animal. Okay, I honestly can't. I'm thinking of like robots, um, <laughs> yeah. machinery. It's a dog. It? Dog. It's a dog. Is it a dog, is it? Yeah, you always wanted to dress up as a dog or a tiger. Tiger, yeah, tiger. So. Lee, who would play you in a film? Who would play me in a film? Oh, yeah. me. That's fun, isn't it? What's the film about? Because I'd have to have different actors for different films. Probably uh, a, a lot of film, like a life of your band, your rock uh, band. Who would play you? Hmm. Uh, what's his name from... Uh, <laughs> from um, is it Bill and Ted or is it the other one? What's the, what's the blonde dude's name? What's the other one? What? Wayne's World? Wayne's World. Garth. Oh, what's he called? That's going to be... Him, anyway. 
Okay. Now, do you know who I want to play me? Yeah. Okay. Wayne Phoenix. That'd be sick. Mark, what's top of your bucket list? Top of my bucket list. Things to do. <laughs> is at the top of the list. This is it. I've never been um, That one was disgusting. Top of my bucket list is... I've done a lot of stuff, Brian. Uh, I mean, I think to be a lot quicker at this than him. You are done well, Lee, yeah. I'd, I'd like to... Um, I would like to, yes. You told me once you wanted to sleep in the capsule, a uh, sleeping capsule in Japan, in Tokyo. That is not a bucket list thing. Did I even <laughs> say that? Were we in Japan? Was I drunk? Maybe. We'll come back to that, Mark. <laughs> you, I'd, like to, I'd like to um, find out what's behind this door. <laughs> Dev. Yeah, we already know. I, we yeah. all, I also want to know what's behind that door. That's what album three, four can be called, Behind the Door. <laughs> Lee, what's the hardest track to play on Ultra Mono? It's easy. Well, it's, it's either um, Natush Panwa or the other one that we were just talking about. It's a Punisher. Yeah, there what's it called? Model Village. Model Village. I think it's Model Village, actually. The two probably has got breaks and it's got um, rhythm. <laughs> the end of war is sneaky, though. Yeah, exactly. That's, so that's a sneaky one, there. isn't it, Lee? I think. Mark, top of your head, who are the four guests at your ultimate dinner party? Dead or alive, go. Right. Stuart Lee. We're going to be at hours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Melvin Bragg. Okay. That's two. That's two, isn't it? Could have made it three, Brian. Or two, really? Yeah. <laughs> One. <laughs> Who you going to McDonald's with? Uh, uh, Lee, should we ask, do you want to answer a question, Lee? We'll come back to him. Yeah, yeah. Come back to me. Lee, what's the best present you ever had as a kid at Christmas? Um, I like, I don't really remember much of my childhood because of the drugs, but uh, there is a lot. Um, there's one memory of Christmas. I have one Go on. memory of a childhood Christmas. My brother bought me a car and caravan toy, quite big. And apparently I opened it and just hit him in the face. For it. <laughs> so, I mean, there we go. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Dizzo. Exactly. Mark, have you got number three yet, Mark? Uh. <laughs> I'm going to ask you another question, and you might be able to come back to this one later. What's the most rock and roll thing you've ever done? It's my oh, biggest oh, fire yeah. ride. <laughs> it the is. Most, Come top of your head, mate. The most rock. I mean, I suppose the most rock and roll thing I've ever done was smash my guitar up at Abbey Road. That's pretty rock uh, and roll. We'll, we'll take um, in that. Lee, Lee, quite apt. Lee, what's Mark's worst habit? Oh, he's just annoying, isn't he? <laughs> Can that be a habit? Bingo. It is a habit. I make it my habit, Lee. Mark, what's your dream support slot? You could support anyone in the world, past or present. Who would it be? Radiohead. Lee, your favourite fish? I don't fucking know. I don't... What do you think I sit around looking at fish? No. I think my whole life is made up of looking at fish. He's got a favourite fish. He tells me about all the time, Brian. He's withholding information here. What happened, what happened to research before interviews, eh? I don't like <laughs> fish, Brian. Well, you Do don't you like eating out? fish? Do you not like eat fish? Or looking at them? Oh, it's jellyfish. <laughs> Mark, what's the hardest track to play on that Ultramano? Same as Lee. It is. Gr 
grinds for me because that pedal switching thing it, <laughs> I, I i fear it we've done we've played it live a few times now and i'm like Shit. Time. lee you're gonna love this question what's your favorite insect honestly mate <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, do you know what i've got to have a favorite insect everyone's got a favorite insect don't they everyone everyone like you know Hey. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Quick fire. I oh, love these questions. Oh. B, B for one was my. Right, do you know what? It actually is the B. I love bees. Bees are cold. They're fucking sick. They're like they're like little woolly jumper flies. Mark, what's the worst thing you've ever bought online? The worst internet purchase. <clears throat> he's he's holding it in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Why this useful thing right here. <laughs> um, the worst thing I've ever bought online is... Da, 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 da. Da, no. <laughs> this, this thing, I expect. <laughs> you haven't plugged it in yet. Yeah, this is going to break uh, Idol's oh. career. It's going to break everything you own, everything it, you play through. Every time I turn one of these knobs, it's a star off an Idol's review. Ooh. Lee, what's your spirit animal? Uh, fucking cute snake, man. <laughs> Lee! <laughs> Mark, Blur or Oasis? Oh, don't ask me that, Brian. Don't ask me that. Got a it's big one. It's pretty easy, Bowen. Yeah. But Blur or Oasis? I can. You can. And you will. Big one. It's like, it's like asking to pick between different times of your life. Yeah, it's fine. It's pretty it, it was Oasis for a very long time. Then it became Blur. And then so, Oasis poked their head back in in later life as I become more nostalgic. I'm going to say Oasis. No, you're wrong. It's the right answer, Mark. Well done, mate. Incorrect. No, fuck they're, off. They're, Lee, they're Lee. Incredible, Lee. They are incredible. Lee, what's your dream support slot? Who, could you, who would you want to support if you could? Anyone? Strokes. Ooh. Mark, your favourite cartoon? Ren and Stimpy. Hey, lovely. Lee, what's the top, your top of your bucket list? To get off this phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Um, okay. You know what? Um, I, I actually, I really want to go to the north of Norway. I've been dying to go there and I still haven't been yet. The north of Norfolk? Norway. Oh, from Norfolk. I've been to what, like <laughs> Norfolk. <laughs> Norwich. I want to go to Norwich. High up. Like from to <laughs> I want to go to the north of Norfolk, as high as <laughs> Norfolk goes. So, oh, just a little bit off Great Yarmouth, but uh, uh, that's not that far. I want to sit on the border. <laughs> um, Mark, complete the sentence. When I dance, I look... There's only one word here, Brian. It begins with an F. Fantastic. Oh, it's close. <laughs> fabulous. Fab I don't know. I don't think I look fabulous. Uh, when I dance, I look um, around me, just in case I hit something. <laughs> Lee, the two guests at your dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bro. I like this. In action editing. Um... <clears throat> I mean, it's really hard, Brian. It's so hard. It's such a hard question. Even two is really hard. Oh, two we'll move four, though. I mean, I think I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to ask Bon Jovi to show his face, really. And I. <clears throat> what, John? John, yeah, John, my mate, John. Bon Jovi. Uh, Who's getting on with John? You, John, and who else? Well, I don't know. Maybe. Can I have Robocop there? <laughs> Me, John Bon Jovi, Robocop. Um, I want some more people now because we got we got to fulfill this round table. 
Well, you were going to get four, but Mark's still stuck on two. So I thought, well, I'm going to give you two as well. He's having Robocop. I'm having bloody... You could have had your Robocop. Cry kid, aren't I? What? <laughs> He's coming. I want, I want Sir David Attenborough there as well. <sighs> well with Robocop? Yeah, and Donald, and Donald Trump. That's four, mate. Imagine this. Like Donald Trump, <sighs> Robocop, Bon Jovi and Sir David Attenborough. Just going and you. And me, just That's a night off. What, what's going on? Who are Mark you? was the favorite pr favorite present you had as a kid at Christmas. Favorite present you had as a kid at Christmas. Oh, do you know what? I, I it was it was this mustard jumper with a bear on the front of it. I remember seeing it in the shop, and I was like, oh, I love that jumper. I was like, I think it was like four, and then. And like he was there on Christmas Day, and I was like, oh, loved it. That's really wholesome. It's nice, mate. Thank you. It's not really. It's very different to Lee's story. <laughs> very, different. very different to your Christmas story, Lee. What was your favourite cartoon? What's your favourite cartoon, mate? Cartoon. I don't know. Uh... Sure, the Simpsons is banging, isn't it? Yeah. Mark, favourite comedian? Surely. You, I sure you already did this. You know, he was a guest at my dinner party. How oh, was he? Yeah. Uh, Lee, James Bond, yes or no? Oh, yeah, I, I like James Bond. Mark, Lee's worst habit. Lee's worst habit mm -hmm. is using a flowery word where you didn't need a flowery word. I knew you were going to say that. I, I, it really, I guess my goat. Oh. Give me an example. So he'll say like realm. And realm's one of his favourite words. Or like, um, I don't know, just, just, you know, like a really like flowery word. And you're like, oh, oh, what? That was so flowery, that word. It's cool, though. Like, you know, it's, it's not going to change either. He likes it. It's gonna, I don't think, I don't even notice I do it, Brian. <laughs> Brian, it's not going to transubstantiate. It just, <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it just happens. Lee, what's the worst thing you've ever bought online? I don't know. It's a, it's a, that's a really hard question it to think is. of. The cuff. Probably a lot. I'll tell you why it isn't. This thing, keeping my flowers alive. Do you know what I mean? oh, Christ, damn it, they, get, they have them online. You need to get one in, Mark. Um, I you had to go Mark, to a specialist shop. Mark, what did the puppy say to the snake? Arf, 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 arf. Lee, it's your last question. Finally, you. I want you to just describe Mark in three words. Describe Bowen. Yeah, in three words. I don't know. Um... That's free. <laughs> <laughs> and so apt. <laughs> uh, I don't know. He's a Annoying, pedant, funny. Mark, repay the favour. Describe Lee in three words. Anti-disestablishmentarianism, supercalifragilistic, exoanecdotious. <laughs> <laughs> Lee is. Um, Hard working, hard work. Genuine. That was really nice. It was lovely. Good word. He did the sandwich technique. Did you notice? I didn't go for the sandwich technique. I went for attack, attack, love. <laughs> Which is generally my uh, my, my go to style. <laughs>
Punch Punch. Oh, no, damn it, no. Stabby is another one. Lee's very Stabby. Stabby. Yeah. Not That's not, four. Not happy. <laughs> you could have Lee at your, at your dinner party. Have you, you find, you've only got three, haven't you now? Mm. Lee is not. I've, I've, I've had far too many dinners with Lee. Uh, many more to go there, mate. Eh? There's many, and yeah, and there's a lot of them happening. Don't worry about it. I'll be, I'll be all right at my dinner party without Lee. <laughs> Three will be fine. Um, Mark Bowen and Lee Hartfrog, thank you very much for joining me tonight. It has to stop. I don't know where this came from. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> It's not me, mate. It's the, it's just the internet. They are so keen, and everyone knows it. Yeah, it's true. Harry, it's Harry Styles and Wildles. It's, it's, you have to take that there, mate. I got it. That is one of my favorite. Uh, that's one of my favorite. What's what's the word of that example of who I am? Harry yes. Styles and <laughs> Wildles. You're going to start referring to yourself at that in practice, aren't you? Like, yeah, I'm Harry Styles. Right? No, sure. You you may know me. I'm the Harry Styles of Wildles. I'm Stasi. Style. It's true. Thank you very much for your time. I'll let you go now. Um, have a lovely lockdown if you can. Have a fucking lovely lockdown. Uh, you can't even go swimming anymore, Mark, can you? They shut them as well. No, they shut us in there, but I'll, I'll find something to plonk myself in. The sea. Sea. <laughs> the sea. Puddles. And um, and Lee, enjoy yourself over at Blighty, and yeah. enjoy being locked down somewhere else, mate. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be wonderful. It's, it's not. It's gonna be shit. Depends where you are. All shops are open where you are. There's not All you can go to here is Lidl's. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. Uh, I've heard. Click and collect is uh, on on. on oh, click and click and I, I had something to tell you. I've been meaning to tell you. I keep meaning to send you a message. My daughter's new favorite thing to do is to take the bins out. <laughs> she goes taking bins out. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> And then you go, Susie, you got your keys? She goes, yeah, got keys. My pocket. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Happy child. Happy child. Fabulous. Sounds like okay. child labour to me. But you what? Sounds like child labour. She's offering to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. She enjoying it, Lee. She's enjoying it. Do you take the bins out, Lee? Do I take the bins out? Of course. Yeah, mate. Who does that? They're not going to take the shells out, are they? <laughs> you got no kiss to do for you. That's what my mum would say. <laughs> <laughs> Mine just managed to get themselves out. Themselves, it's... Thank you very much. I'm going to say goodbye now. You're going to say goodbye now. Otherwise, we'll talk all night. Lots of waving. Then Ben's going to come back in and, and he's going to cut us off if he hasn't fallen asleep already. See you soon, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye.